Hello, mate. Hello, mate. Good news. What's that then? John from Humble Bundle has gotten in touch and he wants to do another Humble Bundle with us. Oh, that's brilliant news, isn't it? It's good news. I like the Humble Bundle an awful lot. Mm, I like it a lot too. As a concept, it's a yes. brilliant idea. In my, in my view, John and Will and Jeff, the Humble guys, they need to be knighted for services <laughs> to the video they games industry. They can't be They're Americans, remember? They, oh, uh, they broke yes, away. They broke the away. They do, oh, well, that's half the audience lost. You'll have to cut that out. <laughs> they think that there are some people in the world who don't know about our games. I would agree with that. Yeah, I would too. So what we've got to do now is uh, tell everyone about them. First game you ever made was a game called Uplink. Now this game was so intense that it caused the editor of PC Gamer to unplug his modem in fear that he was actually hacking a bank. Isn't that brilliant? <laughs> it's brilliant. The idea was to create a game that recreated Hollywood computer hacking with all of its high-tech wizardry and stuff going on, on screen and people typing really, really fast, breaking into mainframes and things. Um, and that was the core concept, that you would start with um, a really lowly computer and you would break into some low security systems for money and you would make money and you would upgrade your computer. And as you upgraded, you would get more and more powerful software and hardware until eventually you were hacking into sort of government mainframes. Um, and you were trying to, you know, play on a really massive scale. Um, and that was the game that became Uplink. Is it real? Yep, it's totally real. Don't say that. I got a email from a guy the other day saying, can he transfer his money out of Uplink into his bank account? Yeah, he can. It's real. It's totally <laughs> happening. It's not real. Not real. <laughs> it's not real. So moving on to our second game there, mate. Yeah. Well... Once something was finished, I started work on a game called Future War. And um, this is what would eventually become Darwinia. And it started out as enormous armies, like 10,000 soldiers per side, fighting on, on a massive landscape. And we developed it and worked on it until eventually we ended up with this very, very tight sort of arcade shooting game where you have to, you have to fight off a computer virus infection inside a virtual world. And the Darwinians are alive inside this computer and it's been infected with a virus and you have to kill all the virus and save the world. It still looks amazing as well. It's amazing. It's got a very, very unique look, as you know when you're looking at Darwinia. And I think that's part of its appeal, actually. It's very difficult to describe Darwinia. You just have to play it, don't you? Mm. Yeah, and IGF winning as well. It's our IGF Triumph game, where we won three of the awards out of five in 2006, I think, including very, the grand prize. Very proud of that. We didn't mention Tron once. No, don't. We'll just get sued. So then, a game that's very easy to describe. Our third game, DEF CON, was all about global thermonuclear war, a light topic. <laughs> yes, that's right. Well, I watched war games, and I love war games. It's one of my favorite films of all time. Um, and I wanted to create a game that recreated that wonderful uh, paranoia of, of Cold War destruction. Um, and that's what DEF CON is. It's, it's a multiplayer global thermonuclear war game. It's very, very minimal, and uh, the sound and everything, the presentation of it, is very, very minimal to create this idea that you are just running this nuclear war as if it's some kind of distant thing that doesn't affect anybody. Amazing um, audio, though, Defcon. Amazing audio. I think Al really excelled himself on that. I think so, yeah. The music in particular is really quite, uh, quite haunting music. So Defcon's got to be the only game in the world that measures the kill count in mega deaths. Yeah. It's quite dark, that, isn't it? It is quite dark. I mean, it's about the futility of war, isn't it? It's about the madness, the madness of global thermonuclear war. And that brings us to Multiwinia. Now, I think Multiwinia is our most, it's really been overlooked. I think we had so much fun just taking that Darwinia world and turning it upside down and throwing just ridiculous uh, ideas and scenarios into that mowing down Darwinians when you're on the beachhead, you know, looking down the barrel of the gun. It's just, to me, one of the most entertaining things that we have ever done at Introversion. Did you find playing multi one year a cathartic experience after Darwinia? Yeah, I did, yeah. It was good. It was good to blow the shit out of them all. 
Bastards. Yeah, you wanted to hurt some Darwinians, didn't you? My favourite mode to develop in Multiwinia was the beach landing scenarios where you have uh, an enormous attacking army, um, but a heavily entrenched defending army. The amount of carnage that you see um, and the amount of fun that you have trying to overcome the defences, it's just a great deal of fun to play. Very, very satisfying. So that brings us right up to date with Prison Architect. So what's the idea behind that? Well, it came from uh, a trip to Alcatraz, actually, in San Francisco. And um, that was my inspiration for this game, to create a game where you, the player, build a prison and set up all of the security systems within it. Um, and I'm a huge Dwarf Fortress fan and a huge Theme Hospital fan, and I wanted to create one of those great Bullfrog-style management games, you know, where you build things and you set things up. And that's what Prison Architect became. And while we were working on it, we sort of discovered what should be obvious, which is that it's an incredibly rich theme, um, which has not typically been touched by the gaming industry. And we've been having a lot of fun diving into some of the real moral conundrums about being an actual prison architect. And it's found a really, really big audience as well. It's a very popular game. It's still, our most popular game, isn't it? It is, it is, but it's still not finished yet. We need to make that point, I think, don't we, that it's an early access game or an alpha game, so when you play PA, you're not getting the finished version, but you will get, That's we right. promise to give you, all of the updates until we get to the finished version, and we're updating it about once a month. And if that's not enough for you, there is a whole host of soundtracks and source code access and tech demos from other projects. Just head over to humblebundle.com and take a look.